I think the World Economic Forum and Davos remains relevant as a platform for discussion and debate on the topical issues that the world faces. And I think if you just look at Davos today or the World Economic Forum and you compare it to a couple of years ago, you begin to see the bigger role that is played by emerging markets. For instance, you know, there are a number of discussions at Davos at the World Economic Forum that are talking about the role that Africa, as an example, is playing in the world stage, as well as how the economies in Africa are making a contribution, a positive contribution to the world growth in an environment which is typically very tough, especially in the developed world. Yeah, I raised the question, Cesar, because one of the articles that I read up as I was coming to the conference was by uh, Mohammed El Arian, the CEO of PIMCO, the largest bond fund in the world. And he said he's never been to Davos. And hell no, he is not coming to Davos because in his mind, he says he does not see it creating concrete solutions that, need, that are needed to try and tackle some of the world's problems. He says there's a lot of talk, but very little commitment. And in terms of follow-up, it's also such a large grouping, it's hard to get everybody to think in a structured way. He thinks the, 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 the forum needs to become more policeman-like in order to be able to get outcomes that are implementable. I don't think the World Economic Forum can be police-like. I think it is a forum for discussion and debate, for sharing ideas. I don't think it's a forum that's meant to come up with solutions per se, but it does certainly provide a platform where you have to decide, or a company has to decide, or a country has to decide how it uses the World Economic Forum and what it intends to get out of it. Yeah. So the number of opportunities that it suddenly provides for discussion and debate, for sharing ideas and so on, which you can then take things out of and go and apply them in your setting, in your country or within your company. Yeah. Now, you're the, se the, the session that you attended today yourself was on social media. And of course, we all know social media is exploding around us. And here at Davos this year, Twitter is all over the place. There's actually a, a whole page that has been set up to talk about Davos. Did you pick up anything that you can take back to first run? Well, of course, you know, we, especially through First National Bank, are very active in the social media space. Uh, we're active in innovation, and after all, we are an innovative group, an innovative bank. And therefore, social media is particularly important, which is why I attended the session, because, you know, we see uh, the social media is providing a platform for us to distribute products. If you just look at the FNB application today, we have transacted, in fact, generated more than one and a half billion rand in the last year using the FNB application. We have more than 100,000 users today. And if you just look at cell phone banking as, a, as an example, we have more than three and a half million uh, users, active users. And therefore, as cheaper smartphones become available, and Africa is going to really experience a significant amount of growth in the smartphone uh, area over the next couple of years, means that you can use that uh, really to leapfrog yeah. access to finance, access to information for a lot more people than the traditional technologies were able to do. It certainly does look like we're at the beginning. Let's move on this conversation to one of the issues I raised earlier, the whole issue around the banking crisis. When you look at the problems that we've had around banks, do you see banks emerging from this crisis looking pretty much the same as they looked before? Or are we likely to see here transformation such as that that was begun in Nigeria, where there was a separation of investment banking and the other arms of uh, banking? And in the US, we're beginning to get noises as well, where you need to separate your commercial as well as investment banking. I think we must separate what is going on in the banks that operate in the developed world or some of the global banks. Yeah versus what is going on in the banking industry in emerging markets. Will it even not affect them? It will, of course. You know, the macroeconomic environment that is afflicting the developed world certainly will have an impact on emerging market economies yeah. and therefore on the banks that operate in emerging markets. However, the issues that the banks face in the emerging markets or in Africa are very different from the issues that the banks face in Europe or the U.S., or in some of those markets that are going through sovereign debt crisis, as, exa as an example. And therefore, yes, there are some general issues. If you just consider, for instance, what is being proposed in Basel III in terms of capital adequacy ratios or liquidity mm -hmm. ratios, or the need to improve transparency and disclosure on compensation. Those issues are general and affect banks throughout the world, yeah. including those banks that operate in the emerging markets. Uh, and you must realize, for instance, that when it comes to things like capital adequacy ratios, yeah. the banks in emerging markets and in Africa, or in South Africa more specifically, don't have an issue in terms of 
you know, inadequate capital adequacy ratios. Sure. We're well capitalized. We operate in one of the most sophisticated financial markets in South Africa, both in equity markets, the bond markets, or even just the banking market uh, generally. Yeah. And therefore, some of the issues that are on the table for discussion and debate here are in fact not really that relevant in as far as uh, we are concerned as emerging markets or as South Africa.